Okay, so I'm currently building my own jet engine, and while I figure that most people watching this video will never try and build their own jet engine, something that a lot of people might get used from is how I built these turbines. Uh, this design could be applied to a lot of different projects, it wouldn't have to be a jet engine, it would be a water wheel or anything really. Um, so I built this using fairly simple tools, uh, just a drill press, some files, a hacksaw, just the kind of thing you would probably have in your workshop already. So I started out with a steel disc. In other applications it wouldn't need to be steel, but because it's a jet engine and it's going to be extremely hot air, uh, steel is really the only thing I could use in this situation, but you might need to use aluminium or even plastic. But I got it off eBay, uh, they have a depth of about 10mm and they're about 94mm in diameter. Uh, so first of all I needed to find the centre. So I used a set of calipers to do this and it's never a good idea to scrub using calipers. Uh, so I set the calipers to half the diameter, which is the radius of the circle, and scribed a, a small arc in what looks like to be the centre. And by doing that from three different points, as long as the point of intersection is the same on all three arcs, you should be able to find a fairly accurate centre for your circle. So I punched the centre with a centre punch and hammer, which gave me a reference point for where the centre is, and then I moved on to marking out the blades. I'll make my plans for this design available to you in the description of this video, uh, but they could be adapted to shoot any project really, it's a fairly simple uh, idea. So using these plans, um, I marked the centre point of each blade around the rim of the disc. Uh, I did this using a flexible ruler, which is not very accurate of course, but so I'm trying to do this with limited tools and a limited budget, so it does the job. So one way that I made sure that the blades would be uh, equally spaced from each other was to measure from one starting point every time and maintain that point of reference for each blade. So each blade should be 14.2 millimeters between each other. Uh, so instead of measuring 14.2 for each hole uh, that I would later drill, I instead measured 14.2 and then added 14.2 onto that to have a, a larger number, obviously, that would mark from the same point of reference as the first one. Uh, because small errors eventually would add up into much larger errors if you were to just measure 14.2 every time. So I used a hole saw and it was a 14mm hole saw with a pilot drill that was about 7mm and this left me with a, a cylinder of material left that had a thickness of about 3mm uh, which would be the final outside of the blades. So as you can imagine, cutting these holes using a hole saw in a drill press was quite a pain. Um, it took a really long time, just for every blade it took a good few minutes to cut it just because it was so much material to remove uh, and it was steel. So it took a long time, I had to use a lot of cutting fluid to keep it cool, to keep it from burning but you know, still it got really hot as you can imagine. There was a huge amount of mess made, a huge amount of swarf and oil and just everything all over so make sure you plan for the mess that's going to be made. Also you'll notice my drill press uh, is really quite crap. It's from Aldi, it's Powercraft. Uh, it was very cheap and it's good for the price but it really didn't have the torque that I would have liked uh, to be able to do this and the belts are all loose and it's just not good. So you will notice that I'm maybe running the drill a little bit fast. Uh, that's the only setting that I can have it on really and the belts not slip. You do want to be running your drill press quite slowly um, and you want a really good hole saw ideally. I would recommend that you just buy a new hole saw, 14mm uh, in this case, um, and it'll probably be broken by the time you're finished with it just because it's such a massive task to drill all these out. So after you have all 21 blades cut, um, you'll need to half each one. So using the hacksaw, just cut each blade to the base um, and then you've got to get the other half of the blade out. So uh, some of these will come off really easy with a cold chisel. Um, others you're going to have to saw in a, an angle and then again at another angle and then file away to get all the excess out. It's easier if you can just chisel it off, but it's not always that simple. Uh, and then there'll be a lot of cleanup, so you need to get a bastard file 
and file it right down, make it as clean as possible. Um, and then depending on how it's gone, you may need to go back to the drill press and just drill a few a little bit deeper. It's really important that everything is uh, is symmetrical and all the blades are equal depth and equal size because if there's an imbalance, uh, depending on your application, but particularly in a jet engine, uh, it needs to be really well balanced because otherwise uh, you're going to have vibrations and it could rattle itself apart. So once you have it all cleaned up with a file, you'll need to make the sharp edges on the blade, uh, which are a really important part of the fluid dynamics of how it works. They need to be sharpened, really. Uh, this was a really tricky part, actually, but I found the best way to do it was just to use a, uh, a sanding drum on the drill press, uh, and you just have to manually go in and sharpen each one individually, uh, which does take a while, but uh, it's produced a really good result, uh, and I'm happy with the way these went. So I tested it in a, a very makeshift way using uh, a block of wood with a bearing in it and a drill bit uh, attached to the turbine in order to make it spin. Uh, so this is uh, not a great way to do it, but it highlights any like major issues for us. So I blew air at it using an air compressor, uh, only a real little bit. You don't really want to be making it spin very fast when it's in this uh, makeshift setup. Uh, but it can really highlight any areas where it looks like there's more material on one side than the other, uh, which will be able to take off with a file. So just keep testing it uh, very slowly and eventually you'll find that it runs with no rattle side to side and that's when you know it's fairly well balanced. Um, if it was a real jet engine you need to do much, much more thorough uh, balancing than that but for our purposes that's not so bad uh, if it is something simple like a water wheel uh, you know really don't matter that much so despite the very makeshift tools you'll be using it is possible to get a fairly well balanced turbine uh, just taking your time filing away small amounts side to side so you'll be able to come up with something much better using superior tools like a lathe or a milling machine because I don't have any of those things uh, I'm really happy that I've been able to come up with something uh, quite precise as it is. Uh, it might not be perfect, but it's a really good start in my opinion. If there's any brands out there that do want to send me a lathe or a mill machine, um, I'll have their brand tattooed on my forehead, so if that's something you're interested in, just send me an email. I hope you've got something useful out of this video. Uh, I think that a jet engine, while it's going to be fun to watch, nobody's going to get anything really useful out of it, whereas this is something that you could apply to all kinds of different projects, you know, a water wheel or, or some kind of turbine to generate energy. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you could use it for, so I hope that you found this useful.